Today, I have a problem from Cambridge University's mathematics entrance exam step. This is from 1990, so a very old question. And if we just skip ahead to the last part here, we are supposedly proving this really beautiful result. Let's get stuck in. Show that cosine of alpha over 2 times cosine of alpha over 4 equals sine of alpha over 4 sine alpha over 4. This is pretty straightforward to do. In fact, I'm going to first multiply by 4 sine alpha over 4. And all we have to do here is use our double angle formulae. So um, these things together, if I write this 4 as 2 times 2, 2 sine alpha over 4 cosine alpha over 4 just becomes sine of alpha over 2 using the double angle formulae. So that's using it once, and then I can use it again here, and this will give me sine of alpha, like so. So that gives me this result when I then divide by 4 sine alpha over 4. Um, we want to prove that for such alpha, this product now, so if we do the product um, cosine alpha over 2, cosine alpha over 4, and so on, up to cosine alpha over 2 to the n, we get sine of alpha divided by 2 to the n, sine of alpha over 2 to the n. This, again, um, is very similar to what we did up here. In fact, you can just prove this by induction. So I'm actually not going to go through the details here. It's just a, a very straightforward proof by induction. One thing you do want to be careful of, though, if you are writing this in an exam, is you don't want to skip over the base case here. You might think, ah, oh, I've done the base case up here. But this is the case where n equals 2, not the case where n equals 1. So you can definitely start from here and use this as your base case. But then in order to fully prove this, you would also then have to prove the case n equals 1 separately for it to be true for every positive integer n. Cool. The next part, deduce that alpha equals sine of alpha over this infinite product here. And again, this starts with deduce, so we want to use the previous part, and it's relatively clear how we want to show, uh, use this. We're just going to rearrange this, and we're going to get the sine of alpha divided by this infinite product, so cosine of alpha over 2, uh, cosine of alpha over 4, blah, 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 cosine alpha over 2 to the n equals just 2 to the n sine of alpha over 2 to the n. And now to get this thing that we want here with an infinite product, we just take the limit as n goes to infinity of the left side and also the right side here as well. Squeeze that in there. Okay, great. So this term here on the left just becomes the right hand side of this equation so that's great now we just need to show that this thing here equals alpha well let's have a look at this we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n times sine of alpha over 2 to the n but as n goes to infinity both 2 to the n and 2 to the n they both approach infinity as well at the same rate so in fact i can just make this the limit as n goes to infinity of n times sine of alpha over n like so and now I can do a bit of a substitution and replace n with 1 over x. And this is going to become the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side. Because if n is approaching infinity, x will have to be approaching 0 from the positive side of sine of alpha x divided by x. And the reason I've done this is now this is a bit more of a famous limit. This does indeed equal alpha. Um, you can either do this by using L'Hopital's rule, or you could use maybe small angle approximation because now x is near zero, or you know, use the Taylor series of sine to show this, but this does indeed equal alpha, and that gives us our result here. Let's move on to the final part. And hence that pi over two equals this beautiful reciprocal nested fraction product thing here. Again, this question starts with hence, so we want to use this previous part, and it's pretty much you just plug in a value of alpha, and it's pretty clear here we want to plug in alpha as pi by two to get pi by two on the left side. So we get pi by 2 is sine of pi by 2, which is just 1, all divided by this weird product here. So we got cosine of alpha, uh, sorry, pi by 4, cosine of pi by 8, cosine of pi by 16, and so on. So we want to, oh, sorry, not pi, so cosine of pi by 4, pi by 8, pi by 16, and so on. So all the powers of 2. Great. Now we need to work out what these are. Well, cosine pi by 4 is nice. That's just 1 over root 2. But what about cosine pi by 8, cosine pi by 16, and so on? What do those equal? Well, to work those out, we can just use the double angle formulae again. So recall that cosine of 2x is 1, uh, sorry, 2 cos squared x minus 1. 
So if I just rearrange this to make cosine x the subject, I get that cosine of x equals um, cos 2x plus 1 divided by 2 square rooted. And then I guess in theory there should be a plus or minus there. But I can see here all of these terms are going to be positive because the argument is between 0 and pi by 2. And I know cosine is always positive, so I can just take the positive root if I know x is between 0 and pi by 2. Okay, great. And um, what's another way of writing this? Well, this is just the square root of a half plus a half cosine 2x. And this is where we're going to get this weird nested product from. So to give you an example, cosine of pi by 8 is going to be the square root of a half plus a, a half times cosine of pi by 4, which we know is the square root of a half. So the first term, the square root half, is cosine pi by 4. This next term here is cosine pi by 8. This next term here will be cosine pi by 16, and so on. So a really remarkable way uh, um, to, I guess, approximate pi. Um, really, really cool. A really interesting step one. This is only from step one, 1990. And what I didn't know, which I found out today, was that in the old format of step, some of the exams you actually were, were allowed a calculator, which now they don't allow, um, which means that you they really require you to know all your you know, trig angles and things like that. But also the questions are designed so that you shouldn't really need a calculator to do well in them, unlike A-level exams. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.